Well, we're here at Will's, just right down there with the Coffin Cats. So, um, actually, before we start, if you guys can just introduce yourselves and we'll get started. All right. Uh, I'm Vic. I play bass and sing. I'm uh, E-Ball. I play drums. I'm Ian. I play guitar. So, well, great. Well, well, um, how's the tour going for you guys? I mean, how's it how's it doing? It's been good. It's been good. I mean, this tour has proven to be one. Uh, it it's always gets better and better, and this uh, it hasn't gotten any worse, so it's good. Have there been any memorable moments on the tour so far for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I love this question. So, how, 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 uh, how, 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 sen yeah, how <laughs> censored do you oh, need to have it? Oh, not censored at all. Okay, so. great. We were in uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, yeah. Was it Charlotte, the milestone? Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> they have tasers. They have tasers there. The, we, uh, they don't like bring them out all the time. We just know that they have tasers behind the bar. <laughs> so. Because every time we always end up drunk when we play there, we always end up drunk at the end of the night. We're like, come on, somebody tase somebody, or we'll tase us. And Let's see something. Fun. So this is, this is Ian's first time, like, really extensively touring the East Coast with us. And uh, we're like, all right, we got to break you in at the milestone. You got to get tased, but in the nuts. And so he got tased in the nuts on stage. For three shots. For three shots, yes. <laughs> that was all I needed. That was all I needed. And I got some video of it, so if you hit me up later, maybe I can link it over to you. Hey. Yeah. You can literally see a lightning bolt shoot off of his nuts. <laughs> sure we do. We don't have to worry about the video. Sure we do. <laughs> That's, that is awesome. So, so it gets fun. Yeah. It gets fun for us, at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, it, and if you can't have fun, what's the point of doing it? Exactly. You really, exactly. you know. We told him, we told him that night, too, because this is his third tour with us. And we said, okay, the hazing's finally over with, but we were lying. So. <laughs> It's never gonna end. <laughs> Just so you know. You guys did um, Atlanta two nights ago, and then yep. you had um, Jacksonville um, that you guys like a little in between yesterday. What, did you guys do anything in particular for fun in Jacksonville on your yeah. day off? Got yeah, really hammered. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I see a theme. I yeah, we, we we like to drink. <laughs> well, you know, it's on our days off. It comes down to like we don't normally go out to bars and stuff. So we started like five o'clock or so yeah, we, at a bar and we're like right, let's just get a bottle and go home and watch movies yeah. so we went, we, we went back and then we realized it was like there, 10 so. o'clock and we realized we're really drunk oh. Brock was hugging us yeah <laughs> love you guys oh, thank you so yeah. much for bringing me over to this country to sell we have merch a Slovenian for you. Merchandise guy. We, he does our merch for us in Europe he did such a good job we're like come on over help us out here so. it's it's hard to find it's hard to find people that won't annoy the shit out of you after like a few weeks on the road, let alone four months. So right. when you find those good people, you, you got to stick with them. And I already <laughs> hate Ian, so I yeah. don't need to hate <laughs> Besides drinking and stuff, what else do you guys like to do in your spare time? Like when, even if you're not on tour, like what do you like to do? Um, well, when we're not on tour, we all have normal jobs. What, what, so, what are those? Like what uh, do you guys do? I'm a carpet cleaner. Okay. Yeah. I work for the post office. Post office, and I work in a warehouse, in an air filter warehouse. So. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, it's, well, it's good though to have, a, like, to find jobs that allow you guys to tour. Though, I mean, that's probably the the hardest thing. It, it really, it, is. it really is. I mean, that's that's the only reason that we've been able to, you know, we were able to stay out for like, you know, seven to eight months out of the year. Mm -hmm. It's because we have cool jobs that allow us to come back, and that's how it's always been for us. You know? So we, so when we go home, we, we make sure to work extra, yeah. <laughs> extra hard and, and overtime or whatever they need, so you we can keep that. You don't want to lose that. Other than that, Vic makes workout videos. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, Eric is a dog groomer also, but like a yeah. weird like hobby recreational dog groomer. I don't even know how that works. And Ian's a floofer. A floofer. A floofer. A floofer. I don't know what that is. It's French. <laughs> On the website, you guys asked the fans what they wanted to see or hear on the tour, like what songs. You guys had a list of songs. Yeah, yeah. we need to update that too, by the way. Well, actually, no. <laughs> you know what's funny is we, we used it a couple tours to make our, our set list, and we made a set list without looking at it this time, and it's other than one or two songs, we're yeah. dead on. Yeah, because oh, nice. we, I mean, we just, we always listen to what people shout out at the shows or, people, you know, the majority of the song that somebody asks you before you play, like, hey, you're going to play this, or like, Oh, we gotta eventually incorporate into the set list. So our set is our set is not self selfishly made, I guess. Right. You know, it's made for you know the people that come out to the shows. Yeah, I mean, is there like one or two songs in particular that you guys really see like that hands down show up more often? It's than always you like your chainsaw master. Chain, yeah, the old, the, you know, sure. yeah, and uh, chaos from some of the newer stuff and. Um, uh, it's funny a lot of people you know ask for wild ride but that's on the newer cd it's been out it's been out for a while now Sarovia, people keep talking about yeah. that it's just because uh 
it's I don't know just because it has a one Russian word in it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's fun to say what's fun that. to say when you're drinking. <laughs> if somebody just clicked on this interview and they hadn't heard of Coffin Cats, how would you describe your music to somebody that does not know what you guys sound like? Uh, I always start off and say it's like punk rock and roll, just not to scare anybody off at first. Right. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, explain it's like with an upright bass, and if somebody doesn't know what an upright bass is, then I usually go like, um, you ever heard of the Stray Cats or, you know, like the big, looks like stand-up cello. And, you know. But, yeah, I was just, I mean, we're pretty much a punk band with an upright bass, but we, we, cover, we, co we cover all, you know, all ends, I guess, of it. What made you decide to play stand-up bass? I mean, did you do any orchestra stuff, or no. you just no? No, I, I started out <laughs> playing guitar, yeah, and everybody else played guitar, so I wanted something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And I always, I, I had gotten into like Reverend Horton Heat uh, at a young age, and I uh, always, always liked that sound. And it just kind of one thing led to another, and I saved up enough cash and I bought my first upright when I was like 17. And, been uh, been loving it ever since. Yeah, I mean, and I guess with the guitar background too, you've been able to kind of teach yeah, yourself. Maybe yeah, kind of I mean, I, if, if you know if you know stringed instruments and you know how to work a fretboard, it's it's the transition really isn't that hard. And um, the upright bass, it's it's a fun instrument, you know, it really is. Yeah, and then I guess the the metal plates and stuff does that help with just keeping it those, together? Those those are there out of uh, necessity of because of how many times I've had to I've broken it and rebuilt it, and oh, you know, yeah. it's just. I we don't like to have a boring stage show, so things get broken, <laughs> people get hit, and, and other people get hit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I see plenty of uh, pictures of you or footage of you <laughs> bloody, and I think maybe the last show I saw of you guys, I think you might have. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, it gets it, once in a while it gets bloody. I, it doesn't happen every night. Yeah. My head could, my head can't take it. But. <laughs> yeah. You guys are from Detroit, I mean, which I've never been to Detroit, but I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's considered, I guess, a tough, you know, city. I mean, it's, it has, it's, you know, it's a it's, hard Well, knock. it's not getting any nicer, right. I can say that. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, uh, it's a very, uh, well, I mean, it's a very run-down city. There's, there's, no, there's no economy there so much anymore, and, and a lot of people have left. And so it's also a very barren city. If you ever want to see what things look like after the apocalypse, it's a good place to go check out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you find that it, that situation that where you guys are living does that help you know with yeah. your music and i mean and we live we, i mean we we don't live in the city limits we live right. in, out, in the metro area outside in the suburbs but even that's not that great anymore and um yeah i mean it, it i don't know we definitely have a sense of pride that we're from there i mean and you know we support it and, uh but yeah i mean i think it gives you a little bit more of an edge or an edge to not want to be there <laughs> to be out on the road as much as possible yeah. i guess that's the best way to put it yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then tell me about the new ep coming out this fall I, I read something about that is that uh yeah um that actually i just uh announced that and put new uh, two new tracks up on online today but uh we're gonna have uh it's a split that we're doing with 12-step rebels uh they're a band out of albuquerque uh and um we hope to have it out at the end of november if all goes well, and we're, we're, we're self-releasing it. Okay. So it's not going through any distribution, it's not going through any record labels this time. We wanted to have something that we put out ourselves, and you're only going to be able to get it directly from us or from uh, you know, a show, you know, and it's called From Our Hands to Yours. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome, and we're looking at like four or five songs? Uh, six, they're doing six tracks, we're doing six tracks, one of it, which is a cover of uh, one of their songs, and they're oh. covering one of ours. And uh, Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we, got to, we got to work with uh, a buddy of ours, uh, Rene De La Morte, from this band called The Brains, a psychobilly band out of Montreal, who we've done uh, quite a few shows with, a great band. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to... Uh, we're looking forward to recording a full length with him uh, next summer. So we'll hope to have it out by the fall. But for now, just to kind of tide people over, we're putting this EP out. Really. That's yeah, great. So. No, that'll be good. And uh, Dream Tour, if you guys could pick one or two bands to go on tour with you that, and money's no object, doesn't even have to make sense, you know, in the... Pantera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Proof that would be fun. We, uh, I, Bad Religion, yes, yeah, our uh, Pantera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a little excited thinking about the, it. Uh, <laughs> when we were over in Europe, we had this. We were in this uh, like transit bus that had a, a flip-down DVD, uh, 
and the driver, uh, he had these Pantera, he had the Pantera home movies, so we would be hammered and get watch those, and they're just fun DVDs to watch. We get all fired up. We're like, we want a backstage that we can wreck and yeah. destroy TVs. <laughs> and the big, didn't they have like a big cake or something like on that one too? Oh yeah, yeah, they make, oh, try yes. to make the security guard eat a cake. These yeah, are our favorite. Oh yeah, that's for you. Thank you. Just you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's a special. That's a these golden these ticket. these are what we look forward to every night at the shows. These are our drink tickets. Yeah. This is how we break them up. Yeah. You. Yeah. And then we'll just do this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, but I mean we uh we would love to get on the road with like you know a larger punk act or something like Bad Religion. You know, just a band that we've always looked up to or or Pennywise. Even. Oh yeah. Um, it's always it's always fun too, like you know when we we did like the Mad Sin tour and that, and you go on tour with a band you look up to, and then you find out they're really cool, and you, and you get for us to be able to develop that bond is, is yeah, always fun too. That's it's it's always a hard question because we've already been so fortunate enough to already play with Necromantics and tour with them and tour with Mad Sin, and you know we've been able we've been fortunate enough to open up for a lot of cool bands that we thought we'd never play any shows with. So. In your music collection, is there one or two, or there one or two are artists that Fans might be surprised that you guys listen to. Like, he oh. is obsessed with Lady Gaga. He obsessed got me. He got me. It's, it's so catchy. He's gonna, he's gonna play it's it not off a like joke. we're kidding. <laughs> we're not kidding. Uh, Serious fix. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the, the, there's two there's like two there's two artists that are mostly like always playing after a show if I'm p passing out or if I'm driving before driving to a show. It's Waylon Jennings and uh, Sheer Terror. Uh, yeah. Which is, yeah, I mean, Waylon's just awesome all around. Right. Sheer Terror's good music to get pissed off to. So. Because when the Waylon Jennings, didn't he, isn't he the one that did like the Dukes of Hazard yeah. music and stuff like yeah. that? And the, yeah. he was the narrator, I think, for yeah. that stuff too. Yes, he so. was. Yes, he was. I watched Dukes of Hazzard. <laughs> From Virginia, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, but uh, plans after this tour's over, what are you guys doing? Um, we're going home for a month and uh braving the michigan winter <laughs> and uh I'm going back we to mexico. yeah oh you're from, so you're from new I'm mexico, from new mexico oh wow okay yeah he's 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 not an original member right <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about that yeah <laughs> one drink ticket um that, no, no. we're gonna be we're gonna be home for a month uh hopefully because it's still very up in the air right now but we're working on a, a tour uh, and that's going to take us for a month over in Europe for most of February. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. And then once we get back from that, it's back on the road in the States, coast to coast. And we'll come home for the summertime, record uh, the full length, and then go back out on the road for the fall time. So we always plan our year out, you know, at the, towards the end of whatever year and plan out the whole next year. And it's this cycle we've had going now for four years, and, and it's been working pretty good. And I'm guessing too the jobs, it's a perfect way for them to, you know, okay, you come in at this time. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. kind of know. The, 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 goal, the goal is, and it's getting there slowly but surely, is to not have to go back to work. But, right. you know, we, we, don't, we, we don't get rich doing this. We basically make enough as if we were working our normal jobs, sometimes a little bit less, but enough to pay the bills at home, make sure that everything's, you know, make lights sure the electricity, <laughs> make sure the lights are still on when we get home. And, and that's it, you know. We all we all live pretty simple. <laughs> so we just need to make a little bit more to get that bar tab. So when we're home, I mean, you right. be that guy that sits at the end of the bar. That's yeah. That's that's the hardest part is being home and not being in a bar because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're so used to being in a bar every night and trying to be in a bar every night when you're not on tour is very costly. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> and then lastly, what message do you guys have for your fans? Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean. Well, we, we are forever grateful that we have people coming out to the shows and to see the shows get, you know, over over seven years now, see the shows progressively get larger and larger and uh, more interest, you know. And from uh, from genre, you know, from fan base, all kinds of fan bases, you know. It, it's, it's cool to see that spreading and people have a nice open mind about what we do and it's cool to see. So we certainly appreciate it. I'm looking forward to, this, uh, to the show tonight and then, uh, so that's it. So thank you very much. Yep. Thank you.